hepatitis is really an inflammation of the liver. We got this itis, hepa means liver, so we got this inflammation going on of our liver. Now, the causes can be viral or alcohol can cause it, toxins like acetaminophen, or it could be autoimmune. Now, viral hepatitis is the one you're going to see most often in the clinical setting as well as on the NCLEX. Click the link below or visit nursing.com slash NFN for a free NCLEX ebook covering the 77 key topics. So really we're going to focus on viral hepatitis here. Now the severity can range from very mild and self-limiting and we see healthy liver cells start to regenerate over time to very severe where the liver becomes necrotic and you have cell death within just weeks of onset. Now we're going to talk mostly about the viral type of hepatitis. So one important thing to note is that they could have what's called an incubation period. Now that means they may be contagious, but completely asymptomatic. So we won't even know that this person has hepatitis, but they won't even show symptoms for two weeks. All right. All right. So here's a little chart that we have and we do have a cheat sheet available. Uh, about this for you. So let's take a quick look at the different types of viral hepatitis. Now there's five types. You have A, B, C, D, and E. What you're mostly going to see is A, B, and C, especially considering those are the ones that healthcare workers are at risk for. So again, check out the cheat sheet where we have this kind of spelled out for you. Now hepatitis A is transmitted through the fecal oral route. So usually what happens is this happens when we have poor hand hygiene. Now this can happen with food handlers or silverware or doorknobs. And eventually you put your, the food in your mouth or the silverware or your hands touch your mouth after touching a doorknob. So the best thing we can really do is hand hygiene and safe food handling. Now there is a vaccine for hepatitis A uh, and you should be aware of that. Now with hepatitis B is transmitted via blood and body fluids. This means any body fluid getting into your bloodstream, either from a needle stick or even if you get uh, into your mucous membranes, like your eyes or your mouth, you can contract it. It can also be transmitted sexually. So we want to educate our patients on safe sex practices so they can avoid hepatitis B. We also focus very largely here on hand hygiene and needle safety. Extremely important. This never recapping bloody needles. We also screen at-risk patients and screen donated blood to make sure we aren't inadvertently giving blood that's contaminated with hepatitis B to another patient. Now again, there is a vaccine for hepatitis B as well. Hepatitis C is the most common one you'll see and it's transmitted via blood. This is done usually through needle sticks or IV drug use. Again, we focus on hand hygiene and needle safety, as well as screening donated blood from high-risk patients like IV drug users. Now notice there is no vaccine here for hepatitis C. One big thing to note here about hepatitis is that there are no special precautions. This is all just standard precautions, okay? Gloves when in contact with blood or body fluids and hand hygiene. You should be doing that at all times when you're working in the hospital. Now you don't need to know much about hepatitis D and E except that there are no vaccines for either. Hepatitis D is opportunistic virus that only occurs with hepatitis B and hepatitis E is really common in underdeveloped countries. If you need more help breaking down complex topics like this one, make sure to head over to nursing.com slash NFN, click the link in the description below or scan the QR code to unlock your free NCLEX review that covers 77 must-know nursing topics. Make sure that you learn this, that we love you guys. Now go out, be your best self today, and as always, happy nursing.